The War Bat is the newest addition to the monster versus arsenal of malevolent creatures. But unlike the other titans, this monster literally stands head and shoulders above the rest, including Godzilla. Today we will be going in-depth behind the anatomical mysteries of this monster, as well as answering how large is this titan? How does it hunt? Does it possess special abilities? How can this creature even fly? This and more as we uncover the mysteries behind the ultimate snake titan. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Did you know that Hollow Earth dwelling monsters can leverage underground tunnels to quickly access anything in the world? But would you believe that you can, in a way, do the exact same thing? Many online services like streaming shows, blogs, and websites are only exclusive to certain locations around the world. Enter NordVPN, an online tool that allows you to log into one of the 5,400 servers located around the globe, while giving you the peace of mind that your private information, passwords, and browsing history are shielded from bad folks that are out there to steal your stuff. Want more? With just one NordVPN account, you can protect up to six devices. In addition, NordVPN crushes it with servers located in 59 different countries to ensure that your connection speeds are faster than an Argo in pursuit. So take a moment to visit nordvpn.com goji or use our special promo code to select one of many epic protection plans, including one with a free month. Special thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. And now, let's go back to analyzing the Warbat Super Titan species. Simply put, the Warbat, or Nozuki, seem to be gigantic snakes that reached the pinnacle of evolution within the Ophidian group of reptiles. These new anatomical features could possibly be credited to the radioactive effects of the Hollow Earth. Let's begin with an estimated size calculation of this titan. The Warbats are briefly seen in the Godzilla vs. Kong trailer. By estimating the proportions of their elongated body in comparison to Kong, we can estimate that this titan can reach lengths of up to 800 to 900 plus feet, making it possibly the longest known titan in the MonsterVerse. Us here in Goji Center got our hands on one of the Warbat figures that are set to be released in March in the US. We zoomed in on the head and found something interesting. Unlike many other snake species, the Warbat seems to have its fangs on its lower jaw. Why is this important? We know that fangs located on the upper mandible are adjacent to venom ducts located in the upper posterior part of a snake's skull. If the Warbat's fangs are located on the lower jaw, that means that they are probably not linked to venom ducts and instead primarily used for piercing. These lower piercers are similar to the ones found in the Payara fish, which are used to impale piranhas and other hard-to-eat prey. This idea is further proved by the Warbat description in the Playmates figure packaging. Powerful enough to tear through armored vehicles with its massive fangs, the Warbats are venom-winged monsters that hunt the hidden depths of the Hollow Earth. So if these weapons are strong enough to pierce through armored vehicles, it is safe to assume that these fangs are possibly an evolutionary response to the types of prey the Warbat would hunt. In other words, Warbats could have preyed on smaller armored creatures. We aren't going to ignore the possibility that Warbats could spit poison. In the trailer, we see that once the Warbat's head collided with the ground and its counterpart, green fluid seemed to gush out of its mouth. In the real world, several species of spitting cobras are known to literally gush poison from their mouths onto their prey, sometimes going as far as aiming for the victim's eyes. This behavior is seen in the animated Godzilla series, where we see King Cobra spit at Zilla's eyes. It would not be a surprise to see this titan behave in a similar manner. But how would the Warbat eat its prey? Snakes are known for eating prey two to three times wider than their own heads. To achieve this, pythons, for example, can walk over their prey with their jaws. To illustrate this, we first need to understand that most snakes have six rows of teeth two rows in their lower jaw, two in their upper mandible, and another two on the roof of their mouths. These backwards-facing rows of teeth hold prey in place while swallowing it. We can assume that the Warbat's jaws are constructed the same way, given that Warbats are designed to be hyper-aggressive and highly sophisticated predators. What makes the walking motion possible is a phenomenon called cranial kinesis, or pterygoid walk, 
which allows these two lower jaw segments to move independently, allowing the snake to drag its prey into its throat without the use of auxiliary limbs. Additionally, a ligature between the segments of the snake's lower jaw allows it to open its mouth wide enough to swallow large prey. But is eating large, heavy animals practical for a titan like the warbat? These monsters are apparently capable of staying airborne, so having a large prey item in its belly would be detrimental to its flight capability. Therefore, the clues discussed so far make it evident that this warbat possibly fed on smaller, armored creatures. Which leads us to the next question. How did this titan hunt? There are a few theories about the warbat's predatory methodology. It is argued that the snake's behavior is influenced by mostly instinctual factors. If true, we can migrate this knowledge into the MonsterVerse and assume that the Warbat wasn't necessarily as intelligent as other titans such as Kong, Behemoth, and Godzilla. But by taking into account its physical properties and similarity to modern-day snakes, we can guess that the Warbat was both a pursuit and ambush predator, possibly going as far as chasing while spitting venom at prey. Pursuit predators rely on fast means of locomotion to chase and kill prey. By closely analyzing the warbat's anatomical structure, it's easy to question this creature's flight capability. In the GVK trailer, we see this particular warbat flapping its wings to stay airborne. This motion, however, should not be possible given that the warbat seemed to lack the appropriate chest muscles required to support a constant flapping motion. Birds and bats, for instance, have wide upper torsos that allow them to exert the continuous flapping necessary to remain airborne. This critical anatomical adaptation is absent in the warbat species. So how can these things stay afloat? By going back to the real world, we can find examples of snakes that are not scared of heights. This snake you see here is the famous Paradise Flying Snake an animal who leverages its complex skeletal build to remain upright while airborne. This maneuver is called undulation, the act of bending a corporal entity in a waveform propagated from head to tail. A recent study held by Jake Socha and Isaac Yeaton discovered that undulation allows the flying snake not only to remain upright during gliding, but also to cover a larger horizontal distance. This is also aided by the snake's ability to flatten its ribcage horizontally. Undulation and rib flattening is not exclusive for gliding snakes. This can also be found in sea snakes, which flatten their bodies vertically to act as one big paddle to glide through the ocean. In the GVK trailer, we again see this warbat seem to move in a similar fashion, almost undulating its way through the air to maintain lift. Interestingly, these paradise flying snakes prey on an animal whose anatomical build might ring a bell. Meet the Draco Lizard, a small reptile with retractable wings that help them glide through the air. Being equipped with this unique body form means that the warbats are likely to stay afloat for much longer periods of time. Draco Lizards aren't necessarily capable of flapping these wings since they are merely rib extensions, but warbats can which could classify these wings as specialized limbs. By definition, a limb is any appendage that is joined to the main corporal entity, such as a wing, arm, flipper, or leg. These many limbs are actually controlled by the Warbat Titan, which leads us to believe that this creature can actually change direction at will while gliding. So now that we have an idea of how this animal can stay afloat, we can build a reconstruction of how this Titan can move and become airborne. First, the Warbat Titan must have either jumped from a tall structure or picked up enough speed for it to glide for a short distance. Once airborne, this Titan can stay stable thanks to its auxiliary sails present underneath its main pair of wings. The amount of time this creature can stay afloat depends on the altitude it launched from or its initial pickup speed. But could this creature be limited to air and land? We know that many snake species are able to swim, some going as far as living their entire lives underwater. The fins on the warbat suggest that this animal could have higher directional capabilities in large bodies of water. This is, however, assuming that these wings are retractable like the Draco lizards or sailfish. If they weren't, the amount of drag created by these wings would prevent it from moving comfortably. In the end, it doesn't matter how much we try to make sense out of these creatures. There is one unstoppable force in cinema that defeats all logic regarding science, 
physics and realism. And that is known as the rule of cool. Which, put simply, states that the audience will be willing to hold back on disbelief and criticism as long as what is seen on screen is... awesome. Yes, that's a real thing. The rule of cool does not only apply to the Warbat, but also this scene, where Kong and Godzilla fight on a ship. Or here, where Godzilla gets dropped without a single one of his dorsal plates breaking. Do you think that the Warbat is strong enough to defeat any Titan in the MonsterVerse? What other rule of cool examples can you find in this kaiju universe? Let us know what you think in the comments. Godzilla vs. Kong is literally a month away, so make sure you gear up and support this channel by visiting the link below and choosing out of the many GVK items available. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more cool kaiju documentaries. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.